In this quick tutorial, we're going to create an interactive PDF using Acrobat Pro. And I'm assuming that you've created your PDF already, and you can do that in Word, and in Pages, and in InDesign, and in Photoshop, whatever you want to use to create a PDF to start from. And then we're going to edit it and add buttons and links and interactive bits with Acrobat Pro. Acrobat Pro icon is down here, the red kind of A. If it's not there, go to your spotlight, search Acrobat, Acrobat Pro. Uh, you would click open to find your PDF file. I've opened mine recently, so it's right here. So I'm just going to click here. Here's my interactive document. Now I've created basically a template of where I want to put some stuff. And this document doesn't make any sense, so just ignore that part. Uh, this is where info goes. Wouldn't it be cool if I put some buttons and navigation here? So I'm going to put some buttons here. I'm going to make a web link. I'm going to pop in a video. And I have some two other pages that I'm going to want to link to. So, I need to pull up the tools options, and the first one that's usually shown is the pages section, but everything that we want is actually under the content section, so you're going to click content. Now, if you want to view the PDF as everyone would see it, you click this little hand up here. Uh, if you want to select things and edit it, you use the select object command. First thing I want to do is add some buttons and navigation, so I'm going to click OK. And anytime you do that, it gives you a box and some crosshairs. So I'm going to try to line it up here. Click there. Now I have to give it a name. So the first thing I want to type is info. Hit enter after you type your button name. And then click all properties. It usually takes a second the first time that you do it. Pop it up there. And now we're ready to enter some info. So right away, the tooltip, which is the little kind of info that pops up over your mouse, um, I put info. That's all you need for this section. In appearance, you can make this whatever you want. I actually want a border on my button, and I want the fill color to be this really gross blue. I want the font size to be 14, and my button appearance is done. Under options, this is really important. Um, you can have it just invert the color when you kind of click on it, but I want to make it an actual button. So I'm going to go to push under the behavior. Now, there's three different states of a button. There's when it's up, when it's clicked in, and when you roll over it. So I want all three of these to be the same. I always want that to say info. So I'm just going to type info on all the different states here. And you can see you could get fancy and put icons, but we won't do that. So I've changed the behavior to push, and for each of the states, I've put info. The last is the most important, which is you have to tell it what you want it to do when you click that button. Now, almost every time for us, we're going to want it to go to a different page. So you can see that you can make it play a sound and do all this stuff, but we want it to just go to a page view. So you choose that and you click Add. And this is kind of strange, but basically you then scroll. So I'm just using my mouse, but you can scroll with the scroll bar. And tell it what do you want to see when you click the most, most button on the, that button. So I want to see the info page, so I'll click set link. And now we're done. So again, I'm under, I'm kind of selecting the object right now, but if I click the little hand up here, I can see it as other people would see it. And I click it, see how it moves in a little bit like a button, jumps us to the info page. Great. So I also have films, television shows shot in Chester. I also have a video page. So why don't we make a few more buttons? There's two ways to do it. We can go back and select our object. We can go edit copy and then edit paste and then we can actually just use the same button but then go change everything about it by double clicking. So under general it's actually going to be called video. Under appearance we'll leave that the same which is nice uh, but this is where we would change things. We want it to say video every time we do stuff. And the action would change as well. So we can actually say, let's edit what this does. And we actually want it to go to page two instead. Now the other way, of course, is just to create a whole other button. So you can use your crosshairs to get it kind of close. And you can change that later on if it's not quite right. And the last one is Films TV. So I'll hit Enter, go to All Properties. I always start left to right, so we click on appearance, and this is where it kind of gets annoying because you have to do everything all over again, but it's fairly simple. Under options, again, we're going to go to push. 
Now the cool thing is on each of these states you can have it say different things. So under Films TV, when I click, I could say, whoa, you've clicked it. And when I roll over, I could say, ooh. And our actions, uh, go to page view again, and we're going to want to scroll all the way down, and this is what we want it to see. So you have to set it exactly how you want people to see it. And then click Close. When I click on the hand, you can see that when I go there, ooh. And then when I click it, it says clicked. So you can change the different states of what they say. And then video jumps down to there. So that's buttons. The next thing we want to do is make web links. It's very easy. There's a link button here. And again, we click and drag. So we want to select the Wikipedia section. Uh, we want a visible rectangle. And we'll make it, we'll just make it black, but we'll make it very thick. And we want to open a website. You could also open a file or go to a page view. And I'm just going to type Wikipedia. Click Enter. Again, we click on the hand, and we can see that this would open a web um, page if I wanted it to, but I'm just going to cancel. So that's easy to do web links, and you could make your buttons web links as well. The next thing we want to do is insert a video. And it's very easy. We just go to multimedia, choose video. And again, the strange thing is you have to drag, click and drag out where you want it to be. So I want it to be around there. And I could put in a URL, but I actually have a little video downloaded. So I'll select it and click OK. I'm just going with the default options. There's the video. Now one thing I've noticed that's really annoying is my navigation gets me to the page I want to go to, but I have to scroll back up. So to make it kind of more web-like, we could put a back button. So let's say we're on the video page. We just want to make a new button, and we'll put it right here, and we'll call it back. Hit enter, remember, then all properties. Back, the appearance, might as well stay with what we've been doing. Fill color was the blue and the text was 14. Under options, we'll do a push again. Back, back, back. And under actions, our page view is actually, we want to go right back to the top. Set link, close. Now, the great thing about this is that it's going to be the same. So I'm going to hit Command C, or you can go Edit Copy. And I'm just going to paste it wherever I need to on each of the pages. And then when I click the little hand, I can go back. So Films TV, back. Info, back. So you can see it's really easy to insert this stuff into a PDF and, and make it interactive. Um, and you can really make it just like a website. You can have multimedia play. You can link to external files. Obviously, those would all have to be in the same folder for it to work. Um, or you can embed stuff right into the document. Now, if I save this as a PDF and call it my interactive document 2, if we go into documents, we can actually see how big it is. So if I scroll down here, instead of uh, uh, 66 kilobytes, it is now 7.9 megabytes. If I hit spacebar, I can preview it here. And if I double click, I can open it in preview. And so those things work. But because I'm not using Acrobat Reader, my video doesn't play. So that's a little difference is that you have to actually open it with Acrobat Reader. Um, so you can see some of the limitations of it. And you can see how the size could easily uh, increase uh, when you insert videos and things like that. Other than that, that's how you create an interactive document. PDF in Acrobat Pro.